Hi, Mr. Brent. Hi, Kuya Brent. Hello. Hello, classmates. Hello, Lysian. How are you to find out? Good afternoon, everyone. How are you? We will start in the next 15 minutes, but because we already have uh, the speaker, Mr. Johan, then I will give him a time to try his voice and also his share screen. Welcome, Dr. Johan Wenandi. Thank you yeah. for your time to be our speaker. Yeah, good afternoon, Mr. Adi and all of the attendees. Uh, it's very, uh, very my honor and very my pleasure to be speaker for today. But now, uh, prior to the starting time, uh, I will try to share screen or try some sound. But I, I think uh, that the, the sound is already okay, right, Mr. Adi? Yeah, your you voice can... is clear enough. Ah, okay. Thank you. So I will try to share the screen right now. Okay, please do so. Okay, I already shared it, but maybe it needs some time. Okay, it's supposed to be appear right now. You can see it, Mr. Adi? Yes, I can. Ah, Thank okay. you, Bob. Uh, thank you. Okay, so yeah, you tried already, you tested already. So we will start in the next 15 minutes, Pak. 
Okay. You can still have a break. I'll have a break. <laughs> are going for coffee. <laughs> yeah, I already have the lunch also. So I'm yeah, totally ready for the next okay. <laughs> speaking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So after you know, uh, I'll be back in the next uh, 15 minutes while yeah. we are also waiting for the participants or attendees to join. Yeah, perfect. Okay, I will okay, join again you. next 10 or 15 minutes. See you. Okay, see you in the next 10 or 15 yeah. minutes. Bye. Yeah, bye. Ya. <laughs> 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 Forever. Hi, Judith, you old call screener, you. Um, listen, I, 
I just wanted to run something past you. Uh, Jake was telling my mom about the fun time he had with your parents, and she thought, no, I haven't even asked yet. Oh, really? I've got news for you, lady. You can't say no. She's his grandma. Well, she may be that too. This is my weekend. Charlie and I turned out fine.
Hello all, good afternoon everyone. Have you got your lunch all? Yes, we already did. So you already full, but don't be sleepy, okay? Uh, in Ubaya, we are still study from home. So there are no students coming to our campus. But some of the lecturers are allowed to enter the campus, but only some. We need to uh, get a permission to enter uh, our campus. So not many people are in the campus nowadays. And also some leaders are also allowed to enter the campus. Uh, we try to minimize the number of the people coming to our campus. That's why. Not all lecturers, those uh, who are older than 45, no, 50 years old are not allowed to enter the campus for safety reason and healthy reason. Then, yeah, that's why we mostly bring our own lunch because the canteen are closed down. I don't know, uh, Pak, uh, Mr. Johan, 
Are you in the office or in your house, Pak? Yeah, uh, now I I'm at lab nowadays oh, at lab. because okay. yeah because every day I must control the condition in the lab. So I almost like you, Mr. Adi. Every day I was going to the campus. <laughs> yeah, well, I uh, come to the campus every day. <laughs> yeah. Same then. Permission to do so. Okay. Uh, without the further ado, I would first would like to welcome uh, the speaker, Johan Sekwenan, BPSD. Thank you, Pak, for your time and preparing the presentation. I believe that it would be also useful. This morning, we have a speaker of Dr. Risma Ikawati from Faculty of Medicine, Pak. Yeah. And then today, we will have you uh, from the scientific perspective because Dr. Ikawati talk about uh, COVID from the medical perspective. Okay. And then tomorrow, we will have a uh, Internet of Things and also the psychological impacts of the COVID yes. would be yeah, delivered cool, by cool, our then. colleagues. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh -uh. Me, I will just mute all first. Thank you. Don't forget to mute yourself. Wait, I will just set it. Okay. So in the uh, the same with the previous one, we have uh, 90 till 120 minutes, but uh, if the material finish earlier, then we will have the 90 minutes one. I will uh, be the moderator uh, for Pak Johan or Dr. Johan, as he will speak for around 45 to 60 minutes. Then we will continue with the question and answer as the previous. Then now I will uh, inform you the uh, resume of Dr. Johan. He's still young, but he already has a PhD degree from the Korean University. Wait, let me share screen first. Okay. Can you guys see my share screen? Still loading on me. Oh, still loading? Yes, I can see it. Yes, okay. So his name is Johan Sukwenandi, PhD. He's a biotechnologist, so if you ask about plants or trees <laughs> or vegetables, you can answer it very well. His interest is on the plant, secondary metabolic engineering. His current position is the lecturer, one of the lecturers at the Ubaya Faculty of Biotechnology. He is a coordinator on of Bionutrition and Food Innovations Program, one of the concentration under the Faculty of Biotechnology. He is a research consultant of Kalbe Ubaya Hanbang Bio Laboratory. So Ubaya has a partnership with the, one of the biggest pharmaceutical companies in Indonesia, namely Kalbe, and uh, we develop uh, ginseng. Because Kinsen, uh, because Pak John is very uh, good, very and uh, know well about the Kinsen because he studied in the Korea. He's also the current manager of the Alumni Association of the Ubaya Faculty of Biotechnology, and he's a steering committee of the Indonesian Researcher Association in Korea, and he is the Ubaya alumni graduated from Faculty of Biotechnology in 2007 till 2011, and he continued his PhD uh, to Kyunghee University, South Korea. 
and he, he got uh, his PhD degree there. So without further ado, I will give a screen and time for Pak Jahan. Pak Jahan, please. Yeah. I will just stop here first. Ah. Okay. Okay. I already yeah, gave you co-host too. Okay, thank you for a brief introduction, Mr. Ati. And um, once again, I would like to welcome all of you guys to join this uh, Ubaya Summer Program. I believe this is the, the, the first uh, edition of the Ubaya Summer Program that conduct in the online platform due to the coronavirus issue. But I uh, I hope this is not, uh, not uh, disappoint you guys because all the international village already uh, planned the, the sessions very well. And they, uh, thank you also for inviting me as the one of speaker for this session. Uh, and okay. I got the information that uh, the, the attendees here is from various uh, background study. So I, I, I try to uh, make the presentation as general as possible. So I hope you guys can enjoy it. Okay. Uh, I will talk about the COVID-19 and yeah, I have, I keep the tagline, we will survive. Uh, this is the Ubaya online summer program 2020 and it's uh, all you need to know about COVID-19. Yeah, this share screen already on, right, Mr. Adi? Yes, I okay. can see the screen well. Thank you. Okay. Pa. Okay. So first of all, I will give some brief introduction about what is the central dogma of biology molecular before we enter it uh, more deeply into the the virus itself, the, the coronavirus, right? So the central dogma of biology molecular. This is the the things that happen in the all living cells. Yeah whether it's uh, the human cells, animal cells, plant cells, or the microorganism cells. So we have DNA as our information, as our genetic information that regularly uh, transcribed to become RNA yeah, the, by the RNA polymerase. This is the enzyme that convert the DNA into the RNA. And the RNA can be translated into the protein by the ribosomes. So this protein will be as the functional uh, tools uh, to, to, to doing all the cells activity. It can be the structural protein, uh, transport protein, or energy, uh, and many things, or also immunity. Yeah, many things it can happen with this protein. So this is the normal thing that happen in our cells. However, the, the virus has the unique, uh, unique pattern. Yeah, the material genetics in the virus mostly in the RNA form. So, sorry, I can I, I will keep the spotlight here. Yeah, so the material genetics in the virus mostly in the RNA. So uh, during the replication, they regularly make the copy of the RNA by the RNA polymerase, but RNA dependent. So this RNA polymerase is very different with the RNA polymerase in human or the other uh, cells polymerase. But the virus cannot cannot living by himself, yeah, by itself. They, they must uh, live in the host cells. Yeah. So they can do uh, reverse transcribe. So they change their material genetics from the RNA. It can be changed to the DNA. Therefore, this DNA can be integrated into the uh, host cell's DNA. And then the virus can take the authority of that cell and make the dead cell, instruct dead cells to produce many things, uh, proteins for the virus. So this is the background, uh, what that differ the, the normal cells and the virus. Okay. Yeah, this is the general character of the virus. You can see here the virus are metabolically inert. Uh, yeah. Virus also obligate intracellular parasites and cannot make any energy or protein independence of a host cells. So this obligate uh, the virus multiply inside the living cells. So the cells must be living, not the dead cells. And the virus can use all the host cells machinery. That's what I said before that once once the genetic material or the virus can be integrated into the uh, DNA of those living cells, the virus can take the authority 
of those cells and use all the machinery to produce the protein that they need, mostly to replicate them themselves to to become to to make more uh, number of the virus so that they can infect more and more other living cells. Okay, this is the virus characteristics. So we can also take a look at these uh, comparisons. Yeah, this is the comparisons. The structure, uh, they has the DNA or RNA, mostly RNA as the genetic material in the core. And then it protected by the capsule or we call capsid. So it's like alien, I think. But yeah, it's the very different uh, structure if you compare it to the other normal cells. So the, the, the animal cells, uh, yeah, some microorganisms also have this kind of structure. Uh, the, the plant cells have this kind of structure plus some uh, cell wall structure for it, but mostly the cells will have this structure. So the reproduction of the virus only within a host cells. So they cannot do by him, himself without a leap, without a host cells. The genetic code mostly DNA or RNA, mostly in RNA, but in the normal cells like us, the genetic material only in DNA form. So the virus also cannot grow, cannot develop, cannot obtain or use energy, and cannot respond to the environment if they are not in the living cells. So in, in their uh, single form like this, the, the single form like this, they cannot do anything like this. They cannot grow, they cannot develop, they cannot use energy or respond to any problem. However, they can change over time. So the genetic material, RNA or DNA in the virus, it can be mutated, it can be changed quickly or slowly. Therefore, some of the virus can be, uh, some of the same virus can infect and can, in, can infect uh, the people more than once. Uh, I can give the example more simple is like influenza or flu. Uh, the, most of us can, can get infected by flu more than once because the flu or influenza virus is always mutated, it's always changed uh, time by time. Okay. So we will go through now more deeply into the coronavirus disease or we call it COVID-19. Yeah, I want, I want to encourage all of you. So if you have any question, you can use the chat feature in the Zoom. So uh, I, I prefer to do that so that uh, you do that. So not use the raise hand because it will be distracted uh, our presentation because the presentation time is limited. So we can discuss all of the question during the question and answer session, right? Okay, we will go through more deeply in this COVID-19 or we call coronavirus disease. COVID-19 is an infectious disease caused by the recently found virus known as SARS-CoV-2. So it began in the some early reported case in the Wuhan market, the time around December 2019. So most of the patients in there got the super pneumonia symptoms. So that makes pneumonia symptoms faster. Later uh, identified caused by this, the newly uh, identified coronavirus or we call SARS-CoV-2. So why they not, why they name it as the corona? As, as, so as we can see the structure of this virus, the, the virus is uh, has the material genetic like here, the genomic RNA, and it protected by the lipid membrane. And among those lipid membrane, they have several proteins. They have the spike protein, uh, hemagglutinin esterase protein, membrane protein, nucleoprotein, protein, and other envelope proteins. So the structure like this resembles the crown. The crown in Latin uh, language uh, called corona. That's why uh, this is the, the, the name. That's why this virus got the name because the structure of this virus itself resembles the crown or corona in Latin version. So before the outbreak originated in Wuhan back then in December 2019, there is no information about this SARS-CoV-2 virus. As I said before, uh, the virus is always mutated. Some, something happened that it can be mutated very quickly and it become pandemic like this right now. Okay. Yeah. This SARS-CoV-2, how they can um, reproduce in the living cells. So this is the, the structure again, I, I, I show to you. Uh, among those all many protein structure, there is a 
four, comp four important components from the, from the virus. We call it nucleocapsid protein. This is the protein that bound to the RNA genome and make up the nucleocapsid. This is will bring the, the material genetics of the virus uh, to infect the living cells. And they have spike protein, or we call S. This is a critical protein for binding into the host cell receptors. So the first line in the virus, they must uh, identify who, uh, what kind of cells they can infect. So they must uh, bind with the receptors of the living cells. They also have envelope protein. It will interact with the M protein to in, uh, form the viral envelope. And the M protein, or we call membrane protein, is the central organizer of coronavirus assembly and determines shape of the viral envelope. So this is the four uh, important protein from the SARS-CoV-2. So as we can see here, this is the hypothesis. Uh, mostly all of the virus have the similar situation of how they can uh, infect the living cells. So at first, they must bind with the receptors. So in here, we call it the uh, this, the spike protein, critical for binding the host cell receptors. So the S protein from the coronavirus will uh, recognize the receptor of the living cells. Therefore, they can make the nucleocapsid. Now the, the N protein will make the like the capsid and it can enter in through the membrane fusion or endocytosis. It can enter into the uh, cell cytoplasm. And then they can send the material genetics like this RNA. But before that, they must reverse transcript. They must change this RNA into DNA first. So they use the viral polymerase, viral RNA polymerase, to change the RNA, become DNA. Then this DNA can be integrated into the uh, DNA of the living cells. Once it's integrated, so the virus can take the authority of the cells. They can uh, instruct the cells to produce more protein of their needs. So they can produce more another uh, freon. We call it virion, means the multiplication of the virus. So after it has the many virion, the cell will be lysis, it will break out, then they will release more of the virus. The new virus can be infected more and more the other living cells. And do the same of this. So this is the this is how the general virus and and, and this is more specific to the SARS-CoV virus infect the living cells. Yeah, the coronavirus is already well known before the SARS-CoV-2. It uh, can uh, give the various symptoms, start from the mild symptom, symptoms until the severe symptoms such as common cold or mild respiratory infection. We call it the yeah, influenza also in here, uh, belong to the coronavirus. But the more severe symptoms and yeah, have the death fatality rate, yeah, more uh, uh, higher death, death rate or mortality rate is three of these. SARS coronavirus that uh, can cause SARS back then in the 2003, uh, is first originated from China. And the MERS coronavirus, yeah, it, it can cause MERS back then in the 2012, firstly known in the Saudi Arabia, and now the SARS-CoV-2 that uh, can cause the COVID-19. All of this virus is believed that uh, has the animal reservoir on it. So the SARS-CoV-2, uh, sorry, sorry, the SARS-CoV is firstly uh, infected the CIFID, the the CIFID cats. Cipher cats, and then it can transmit to the human. Also, the MERS. It first uh, infected the camel, then infected to the uh, human. So we can call it a spillover, the infection that changed the transmission uh, through uh, from from the animal, and then now it's into the human. So, in the SARS-CoV-2 case, although until now not different, definitely uh, confirmed. Some reported case say that it came from the armadillo, and the other report also said it came from bats. But until now, it's not uh, it's not yet definitely fixed or uh, confirmed what is the animal reservoir for the SARS-CoV-2. But the fact now that the SARS-CoV-2 already infect the human easily, and it can 
it it caused the pandemic all over the world the world yeah so yeah this is the fact right now and this is again i i present again the the, the structure of the coronavirus yeah some of them name it by the hemagglutinin and esterase dimer such as this 221 229e e means from this hemagglutinin and esterase dimer and the other like the uh, nl oc and hku is also named from the uh, diversity of this uh, protein in the in the corona in the capsid yeah the one that make the coronavirus can infect more easily or deadly like this is because the RNA, the RNA, the material genetic of coronavirus, always mutate, mutated or changed. Therefore, they can uh, assemble the, the, the strongest uh, combination to make the disinfection cannot be easily detected by our immune system. Therefore, it can give uh, any uh, more severe symptoms and give uh, and make us sick, something like that. Okay. This is the comparison. Uh, between the COVID-19, with the flu, SARS, and MERS. As we can see here, the incubation time is almost the same. It's around one for, and two, four days for flu, four to 14 days, two weeks for the COVID-19 is based on the data until the March 2020. And the SARS around two until seven days, and MERS also six days. Yeah. And as you can see here, the, the, the severity the severity of the COVID-19 is still below the SARS and MERS. You can see here the hospitalization rate for the SARS and MERS is almost in the most case, but only around 19% for the COVID-19. Also, the yeah the fatality rate, yeah, the fatality rate that can be caused into the death is considered very low for the COVID-19. It's around 3.4%. Now already increased around 4%. But compared to the SARS that reached the 10% or MERS that reached above 30%, the COVID-19 is not, not like the uh, more, more lethal. Yeah. And also, yeah, the, the different the, the main difference between the COVID-19 and the others coronavirus type is the community attack rate. So it has the highest among of those uh, virus. It has 30 to 40%. So it's very quickly spread among each other among the community among the people the flu is around 10 to 20 percent the SARS also 10, 10 in the some area is, it can reach 60 percent and MERS only 4 until 30 percent so this is the differences and yeah this is I take from the data in the United States so still ongoing so the numbers still change globally and regionally but the other we can change in, uh, we can see here the data for the SARS and MERS uh, it's quite yeah, it quite uh, has the fatality yeah uh, it can be infected yeah dead yeah dead around none now now it's not uh, make some yeah it's not lethal right now because it's already uh, the the drugs for the SARS and MERS already found. So since 2003 and since 2014, in United, there is no annual test in the United States. But now for the COVID-19, it's still undergoing. Yeah, it can take up uh, 14 days from time of uh, exposure for you to test positive for COVID-19. So suppose that the first day uh, or the day one, you exposed with the COVID-19 virus and you got some hunch and feeling that maybe I, I contact with some people that already positive for the COVID-19. So you run the test in the, uh, in the third day and you got mostly the negative because yeah, it's not uh, ready yet. The virus is not uh, detectable at that time point. So after that, the virus still multiply and yeah, make number of itself and infect more, more cells uh, on you. The symptoms begin in the day 10. Then you uh, try to get tested in the day 11 and you can receive the, the, the results that you got positive for the COVID-19. So it means the, the incubation period usually vary in, in, in many people, but uh, you can take these 14 days as the precaution as the, like, if you think, if you think you already have the contact with the other uh, COVID-19 uh, patient or the other person that ever exposed to the COVID-19 patient, it's the best 
uh, this is the best time. 14 days is the best time for you to do the self-quarantine and monitor for the symptoms. I will give another example. So this is like another example. Matt was informed he was exposed to the COVID-19 at work in the day one. And they already, uh, he already ran the test. And in the day five, they say that, uh, that the results is negative. So in the day eight, thinking they have uh, negative results and no symptoms at all. So Matt went on the day with Beth. So after that, in daytime, Matt developed the COVID-19 symptoms and got the positive results. Therefore, the Beth, uh, Beth must do the self-quarantine again for the next 14 days. Yeah. Imagine that this is the only illustration. This is a illustration if the one person met only only have did or met with the one person. But imagine if the met already have like uh, contact with more than one person and yeah, like go to the, the office or go to the market, like to go to public service or public place, something like that. So yeah, many number of the. A person got exposed with the COVID-19 virus. Therefore, uh, nowadays the, the government already has the protocol for the uh, physical distancing, not social distancing. I mean, you can use the online platform to do the social things, but more than that, you can call it as the physical distancing. Is give like the like they give the one or two meter distance with the other person, so that you cannot uh, the transmission of the virus cannot go through easily. Yeah, the transmission of the virus mostly by the droplets uh, while the person speaking, coughing, or sneezing. That's why usually we keep the, uh, we must use the mask regularly, yeah, and correctly, and then give the some safety distance while we do interaction with each other, like one to two meters, uh, to prevent the transmission of the virus through the droplets. But now the fact that COVID-19 has already reached the pandemic states. The pandemic is an epidemic of disease that has spread across a large region. For instance, multiple continents or worldwide affected a substantial number of people. An epidemic itself is the rapid spread of disease to a large number of people in a given population within a short period of time. So if the epidemic uh, happened in the some continent and pandemic is a worldwide version of the epidemic. And the smaller version is endemic. is only is only affected some region in one country or many many country in one continent. Yeah, endemic is the small version, and then more larger is epidemic, and the largest is pandemic. is already affected globally all over the world. Nowadays, some country maybe already um, passed some phase of this uh, illustration. Yeah, uh, we can see the the pandemic states is big, start with the phase one to three. Uh, predominant animal infection and still few human infection and then phase four the spillover happened from the animal infection into the human infection and then human to human transmission and it become and reach the peak until the phase five to six is test of the pandemic widespread human infection then it become the stagnant and then uh, the post peak it it decreased so already it decreased the widespread human infection and the post pandemic is already the seasonal level. It's like the other, it's the like new normal. It's like nothing happened again. Yeah. So many countries already, maybe already uh, passed the phase five to six, it's already declined. But some developing country or some, yeah, small countries still reach the peak. Yeah. The same, the, sa the similar states also happen with the uh, medication development. So when the virus, start to become pandemic, the medication of the, the virus also develop. They try, the, the scientists, the doctor around the world try to uh, do the genome sequencing to reveal the virus in sequence, to know where is the mutation, to track the evolution of the virus, and then try to uh, determine the, how to detect the virus infection through the PCR and other tests like, yeah, we, we, we will discuss it in the upcoming slides and also to the immunity status, increase the immunity status or do, do serological tests for it. So yeah, parallel with the pandemic states, the, the medication of those virus also develop. Yeah, it's still undergoing right now. 
I cited one uh, quote from the Dr. Tedros, the World Health Organization Director General. We cannot say this loudly enough or clearly enough, or if often enough, all countries can still change the course of this pandemic. Yeah, change the course of this pandemic. It can be declined or become more outbreak. We still don't know. It's depend on the regulation of those countries, the citizens, the government can work together to, yeah, uh, to suppress the, 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 the spreading of this uh, pandemic COVID-19. So I try to cite the global status right now. Yeah, I when I made this uh, presentation is back to September 11, and those total cases around 28 million today. September 22nd is already reached almost 31 million of cases, and among of those, uh, 96 uh, sorry 96 percent is of close case already recovered, and maybe without prior any uh, like the medication. Is all depend on the immune system of those patients. Yeah, so at those times, the fatality rate estimate around 2%, but now still reaching 3 and 4% right now. So among the active case, right, 7 million back then in the 11th, but today is around 7.4 million. Yeah, the incubation uh, period range vary from 2 to 10 days, 2 to 14 days, or 10 to 14 days. Still, the 14 days is the best precaution for the uh, self-quarantine. So you can manage and monitor your symptoms if you think you ever exposed with other COVID-19 patients. And the death is around, yeah, it's more higher in the uh, patient with the age over 60. So the elderly, is, uh, the elder people is very high risk group and some People or patients with the pre-existing health conditions such as cardiovascular disease, diabetes, uh, diabetes or coronary coronary acute respiratory symptoms or syndrome that is also very high risk group to to yeah, to get the, the lethal effect lethal effect of the coronavirus around almost one million dead from this uh, condition. Yeah. You can uh, check this regularly. Yeah, it's, it's always updated regularly by daily basis uh, with this uh, website. Yeah, www.worldometers.info slash coronavirus. This is the other data. The, the infection and fatality rates is vary by the country. Yeah? So it depends how the, the regular, the protocol, the healthy protocol for, from this country uh, implemented. So we can see here some of the country has the fatality rates is almost 10% in here. Wait, check the annotate. Yeah, in here we can see in the Italy at first until now is the 12% and then the UK 11%, Mexico 10%. But the others like India is around 2%, 1.7, Russia so 1.7, and Saudi Arabia 1.3, but in average 4.4. So yeah, the fatality, uh, the, the fatality rate is quite uh, very low, so that it can like spread very quickly because yeah, it's not lethal, it's not too much lethal in this condition. Uh, keep in mind that this is the newly virus, so the course can be changed by the time going. So in the future, maybe the knowledge that already uh, we collected until today can be changed drastically or significantly. We still don't know. This is the case per million people and that per million people. Uh, this is the other infographic for the COVID-19 patients. The majority infection are mild. They give the mild symptoms such as uh, flu, uh, sore throat, something like that. And around 13% or 14% have the shiver. So it needs a hospitalization such as shortness of breath, yeah? uh, lack of oxygen. And around 5% is very critical. They need intensive care in the medical. Yeah? Uh, those age 60 plus is are most at risk. Yeah? As uh, we said before, mostly, for the patient or for people that the age more than 60 has the chance, uh, has the higher chance to lethal or death uh, due to this infection. And 
Yeah, surprisingly, 63% infect the men and 37% infect the women. Then it has the very uh, higher lethal rate for those with the existing conditions such as cardiovascular disease, diabetes, chronic respiratory disease, high blood pressure, and cancer. Yeah. And with the existing condition, only yeah, less than 1% of fatality rate. And if we compare this COVID-19 with the other uh, disease, how contagious and deadly is it? Uh, we compare this, yeah, COVID-19, yeah, the, the point, the infectiousness is around 1.5 to 3.5%. Yeah, it's ranging in here. Yeah, it's, it's not as uh, fatal as the bird flu, Ebola, MERS, polio, SARS, or tuberculosis. Yeah, but it can be uh, mostly like the swine flu or Spanish flu or rotavirus. Yeah, also the, it's not like more infectious as the measles or chickenpox, but it can like the common cold but more like spreading more quickly. So the possible symptoms of COVID-19 is very ranging from the no symptoms at all, asymptomatic, and from the mild symptoms such as the fatigue, uh, nausea, vomit, uh, rash of skin, until the more safer symptoms such as shortness of uh, breath, difficulty of breathing, chest pain, chest pain and uh, loss, of the sen loss of the taste and sense yeah, of the smelling. Uh, some of these reported that kind of symptoms also. So uh, this is the variant type of the novel coronavirus that already reported. The first reported is based on the aggressiveness and severity. So this is reported back then in the March 2020. They divided two types of the uh, SARS coronavirus 2. 30% is S type. This is the oldest strain of the virus, less aggressive slower spreading causes milder symptoms and continue to infect the new patient at a steady rate. But 70% of the patients got the L type of strain of this virus. The this L strain is mutated or changed from the S strains and is more aggressive and faster spreading, worse illnesses, worse symptoms, more lethal maybe, and then most common in early outbreak in the Wuhan infection have trail off as outbreak has spread. So this is the first time. However, it changed also. Uh, some other reported several months later, they reported based on the mutation or phylogenetic approach. So they, they sequence, they try to reveal the, the DNA, the RNA material of this SARS-CoV-2 and try to compare with others. Uh, there is some mutation, there is some change or not. So this article, uh, published back then in the April. So only one month difference, already the, the knowledge already changed, the, the information about this SARS-CoV-2 already updated. They upgraded into the three types of the coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2, A, B, and C. Type E is closest to coronavirus that found in pets and pangolins, They're considered in the root of the outbreak. This is the first, uh, this is the one that uh, estimated from the, uh, originated from the Wuhan. Yeah. Two subcluster, one linked to Wuhan and one common in America and Australia. And then it changed to, to type B, yeah. most also still in the Wuhan, derived from the uh, type A, with the two mutations happen. It's already slowly mutated in China, but interestingly, it's spreading more rapidly outside of China. Yeah. We don't know still yet what, what the environment factor that caused this uh, different uh, behavior of this B type of virus. And then it changed again to the type C. Type C is the daughter of the type B, uh, one mutation different with uh, this type B and spread to the Europe file, uh, through the Singapore. So they tried to uh, track, uh, they try to track all of the patient and try to reveal this uh, virus DNA. So as, as time is already gone by, went by, uh, the information of the virus already updated, so probably in the future, this information, this information will be changed again. We still don't know, but until now, this is the information. We got the type A, type B, and type C virus. And I heard in Indonesia, some uh, researchers already found another type that very specific, very unique, only happen in Indonesia patients. But we're still uh, waiting for the uh, research publication of it. 
Okay, so we will enter the uh, immunity, yeah? some basic for the, our immune system. We separate uh, the immune system to two versions. We call it the innate immunity and the adaptive immunity. The yeah, innate immunity is the first barrier that uh, working uh, very broadly, very quickly in our body. So whatever the infectious agent enter our body, this innate immunity will work first. But this is not specifically uh, not as stronger as the adaptive immunity. So uh, although they already happen very quickly and very fast in the first barrier of it, if this uh, innate immunity cannot hold the infection, so it can trigger the next level of the immunity, adaptive immunity. Mostly is based on the lymphocyte cells, but it can separate or divide it again to the two versions the B lymphocyte or T lymphocytes. If B lymphocytes, if, if, B, if we use B lymphocytes, the body will produce the antibody, the protein that uh, can block the infectious agents. But if they use the T lymphocytes, they, they will use the cytotoxic T cells. The, the, this, lympho, this T lymphocyte can kill the, the cells that are infected by the infectious agents. So the additive immunity will work more slower more later than the innate immunity. It needs around more than one or two days, and maybe until one week to trigger and then work, work, work well. And if your immunity uh, works well, so you never got six. But in fact, you, you some, sometimes you got six. It means that your immune system is broken or not working well to fight against the uh, infections. Yeah, In the COVID-19 patients, it means that the COVID-19 already break through all the innate and adaptive immunity so that the symptoms happen. Yeah. Start from the self, uh, mild symptoms like the common cold, sore throat, difficult of breath, until the more severe symptoms like pneumonia. It means, yeah, it's already got the infection. The virus already go, yeah, very uh, spread, yeah, spread very well in all of those uh, lungs or the other part of your body. Yeah. This is the case of disease progressions. Mostly the SARS-CoV-2 will bind to the amniotensin converting enzyme receptors, S2 receptors. It finds our upper respiratory tracts. It's also found in the uh, heart. So that maybe it has correlation with some uh, patients that already have the cardiovascular symptoms before, cardiovascular disease before. Yeah, This is the first presymptomatic or asymptomatic states, uh, the first time the sars cov virus to infect our body. Yeah, it's, uh, in fact, the cells and try to uh, penetrate the cells that have S2 uh, receptors. So in the nasal epithelial cells, so in our upper respiratory tract. And around day one, start the early phase of symptomatics. Some, sometimes the person also, uh, the, the, the exposed uh, people also don't have any kind of symptoms, but this is start to got some, yeah, the innate, the innate immunity, the first barrier of our line defense, defense start to active here. The macrophage start to try eliminate this virus, but because the virus got chance to enter the epithelial cells, so the macrophage cannot detect any kind of virus. Therefore, uh, after one week, day 10 or day 7, the virus already multiply, multiply the number. Yeah? At that time, the uh, innate immunity already cannot work well, so it triggered more the uh, adaptive immunity. It's, this time, it, this assemble is T-cell already working with the cytokine release, try to attract more uh, others uh, lymphocyte uh, cells to go in here and try to eliminate all the cells that uh, has the virus. But the side effects here, many, many, many epithelial cells in here is broken. Therefore, it can give some, yeah, the pneumonitis and has some inflammation in here, yeah. And also, yeah, the other blood clot system working in here also and make the clogging. This is very late phase and very uh, it needs more medical uh, attention in here. 
So how we can know that uh, we, uh, we got the coronavirus? Yeah, they already has uh, developed some tests, start from the molecular test, antibody test, and antigen test. The, the difference is uh, what kind of the marker they use. If you use molecular tests, we will have ha able to detect the genetic material from the virus. So we will detect whether the DNA of the virus is integrated is in our cells or not. Usually the sample collection by the NASA or throat swab. So the cells, the epithelial cells in the, our uh, nasal or throat will be collected and do the DNA extraction, DNA isolation, and do the PCR, polymerase chain reaction to detect whether the uh, RNA or DNA of the virus is in there or not. Uh, more simple, we can do the antibody test or antigen test. The antibody test means detect our immune system whether our immune system already developed any antibody or not against this virus. So uh, the sample usually from the blood. Yeah. So we collect the blood and try to separate the serum with the cells, the blood cells. So among the serums, it will uh, has the antibody there because antibody is protein and protein is dissolved in the serum. So it can determine whether we already uh, exposed with the virus and our immune system already developed our adaptive immune system already developed the antibody to against to fight this kind of virus. We also, we also can use the antigen test. This is the newest of the three ty testing types. And yeah, this, this kind of test checking the uh, foreign or uh, uncommon protein from the virus. Yeah, so they will detect from probably M protein, or N protein or spike protein from the virus. So we call it antigen test. Yeah, if we try to divide it again, we can uh, divide the COVID-19 diagnosis based on two uh, large group. The first one is detect the virus and the other to detect our immune response. The immune response is simple. The, the, the one that we can use as the marker is our antibody the specific antibody that against those virus means they need the blood sample of it. So we call it in the end is serological test, serological test. But for identify or detect the virus state or virus presence, uh, there are several kind of sample that can collect it, sputum, uh, nasopharyngeal, swab, or alveolar lipid fluid. It means they need the, uh, the fluid, the our body fluid sample or epithelial cells that has DNA to check the viral, virus um, presence. So the biomarkers is the material genetic of the virus, yeah, DNA or RNA, or the antigen means the protein of the virus. So if we use the virus protein or virus antigen, we call it antigenic test. So based on that, we only detect the uncommon protein that uh, presence in the patient's body. So it means it come from the virus, it's originated from the virus. But it's more complex if we try to uh, detect the virus by of the, by us of the nucleic acid of the, or the material genetic of the virus. We can use QRT-PCR, we can use the DNA sequencing of the hybrid methods of these two methods. But uh, this upper, these three kind of methods is more accurate compared to the serological and antigenic, but more expensive. So usually, based on the location, we can use, uh, we can try to do the diagnostic based on the central lab or point of care. Point of care, that is at the time and place uh, the patient care. So when, where or when this patient uh, try to do the diagnostic method, they can use this point of care method. But if you need some more equipment or machinery, uh, they, they use uh, QRT-PCR or DNA sequencing. It's more complex, they need more machinery. It's not simple at all. Uh, today, the recently con condition, your COVID-19 already have the projected timelines for the treatment and prevention. So there are six, six programs working on three different approaches. The first one in, is repurpose drugs. There's already drugs for similar disease before, such as SARS and MERS, and is designated to treat to uh, treatment for these uh, COVID-19 patients. So already seven repurposed drugs, and already right now, 16 
16 antibodies project is already developed to uh, treat one of these COVID-19. Uh, most of them in the phase one or two. Or as, as your information, uh, for the new medical treatment, new drugs, they need four phase to be completed. But minimum three phase already completed and this medical or drugs can be widely uh, com or commercially uh, available in the market. The phase four is usually the post surveillance market survey. So after these drugs uh, already distributed and already used for five years or 10 years, they will do evaluation of the side effects. So the minimum phase must be go through or must be passed for the new drugs to be commercially uh, commercially uh, available in the market is third phase. And now the vaccine itself already reached phase two to phase three. So we need maybe one phase more to uh, phase uh, to pass this phase and then it's already available in the market. So let's see uh, each, each of these uh, approaches. The first one is repurposed drugs. The one that uh, very famous is Favipiravir. This potential repurposed drug already uh, very well, very work well in the previous version, SARS and MERS. So the work, the, the mechanism of action of these drugs is uh, converted in the our body first after the oral administration become uh, they, it must ribosylate and phosphorylation first become active molecule then this active version of drug will block uh, the activity of RNA polymerase of the virus therefore the, the RNA replication of the uh, SARS-CoV-2 possibly will be terminated and then the virus cannot be multiplied inside the living cells this is the first and the strongest potential repurposed drug candidate for the COVID-19 because papipiravir already worked well with the SARS and MERS. And the other uh, mechanism is to develop, try to develop the antibody or the protein that similar has the similar activity like antibody. It means it's based on the uh, protein. It's protein-based, protein-based drugs. The first target is to block the ACE2 receptors. So if we block these S2 receptors, means we already block the chance the SARS-CoV-2 to recognize the living cell receptor. So if we block this one, the SARS-CoV-2 cannot penetrate or cannot infect it in, uh, cannot go through inside the cells. This is the first target. Or the second one, uh, make the target to block the receptors uh, in virus uh, envelope. If the, the antibody, the recombinant or modified antibody already uh, match well with this viral envelope, so the virus cannot be uh, attached or cannot uh, be recognize the S2 receptor in the living cells. So this is the two target to develop the antibodies. And for vaccine development, there has uh, already several choices to, to work with. So we can, the, the, the principle is to make the weaker version of the virus. The weaker version means it's not the strongest or it's not the original version of the SARS-CoV-2. So uh, it means we can use only the uh, capsid like this, only maybe some uh, hole, but inactivated, it means already like uh, we give some mutation or something that uh, make this non-active, this virus non-active, or split inactivated, or some peptides that peptides is uh, amino acid that similar or resemble the peptides from the virus, or we make the virus-like particle, or DNA or RNA, some of that is similar with the virus, or recombinant subunits means the protein that's similar to this virus, yeah, recombinant bacterial factors, and others, yeah. It means we make the uh, weaker version or the inactive version of the virus, then uh, inject it to the, yeah, usually we use the uh, animal, pro animal uh, and then make this animal to produce the antibody. It's very risky if we use uh, the or develop the vaccine by the human, yeah, but Nowadays, some some the, of the bigger uh, pharmacies or drug companies already use the human as the uh, antibody production. It's very limited. It's very uh, costly. Yeah. 
the the principle is when when we when when our system our immune system got to expose with this weaker version of the virus so the immune system will be developed and they can produce the antibody yeah, antibody that specific can inhibit this virus this antibody can be the treatment uh, this antibody can be like uh, our strongest uh, treatment for uh, prevent prevent the infection of the COVID-19 so if you never uh, got the COVID-19 infection is the best way to got the vaccine before you got the sick before you get the infection of this COVID-19 so the many many pharmaceutical companies is racing to develop the first vaccine for the SARS-CoV-2 so before that, there were many actually many kinds of work or many kind of activity we can do to prevent the spread of this disease. Wash your hand regularly or rub your hand with the alcohol-based sanitizer and cover your mouth with the, yeah, with your hand or the flex elbow when you are sneezing or coughing yeah, to prevent the droplet spreading. And keep a distance, distance at least one or two meters between yourself and anyone others. Also use your mask. Uh, regularly and appropriately try your best not to touch your eyes nose or mouth because this is the area that have the epithelial cells and they have the s2 receptors that easily uh, can be infected by the sars cov virus and seek medical attention if you have difficulty breathing and other high fever symptoms and follow the direction of your national or local health authorities so this is the activities ranging from the low medium and high risk so what uh, you must prevent, you must not doing. Is the, so many hashtag like the study from home or working from home because yeah, actually we try to do the physical distancing, not social distancing because you still uh, use any kind of online platform to do social things with your friends, with your family, but do physical distancing with the other person you not know well, you, you didn't know their background, you didn't know their health status, so please, uh, it's, it's very best for you to like uh, prevent or not doing this kind of activity like uh, indoor party or attend a wedding or funeral yeah uh, see a concert go to the stadium yeah some kind of sport activity now uh, already had without any uh, visitor any any spectator yeah so also prevent to going to church because yeah singing is very high risk because increase the airborne of viral spread yeah, some other medium risk such as the airplane flight. Yeah, the flight also has the, the chance, the, the, the medium risk to, to deliver, to, trans, to transmit the virus. Stay at hotel also. Eat a restaurant or dine in. So first you cook uh, the, the dish yourself and or also the delivery for, for uh, or uh, better to do food delivery better than uh, doing the dine in or eat at a restaurant. And the other such as the yeah, get a haircut. Yeah. This is also has the medium risk to, to cut the infection. So the other like the beach, camping, the others you can do, but you must do like the social, uh, sorry, physical distance and avoid the crowds. Okay, so best of all, I can say that uh, it's better to prevent, prevent the things before you got six. So boosting your immune system, yeah. uh, keep happy, uh, not to, not 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 stress or put uh, depression. Yeah, keep happy, keep uh, calm to do all of your activity from home maybe. Yeah, and do the healthy things. Yeah, keep uh, doing the some simple sports in your home and uh, consume very healthy foods to boosting your immune systems. So thank you. Uh, any question or comments, I will uh, leave to the Mr. Adi in the question and answer. Session. Thank you, Dr. Johan, for your very useful scientific knowledge of the virus. Uh, Dr. Johan began uh, his presentation by informing us the, characteris uh, the characteristics of the virus. And we also found that virus is different with cell. And virus can only be mutated if it is living in a living cell. So if yes, it right. is living in a dead cell, so it will be useless for the virus. But because we are living, mm -hmm. then we have a living cell. That's why uh, the virus infected us. 
in yes. China. Then something interesting was when Dr. Johan uh, show us the comparison between normal flu or influenza, yeah. the COVID-19, SARS, and MERS. Yes. Where the fatality rate of the COVID-19 was only three till four percent. Correct. Yeah. Well, until now. We, until now, yes. Yeah. Uh, if you compare with the SARS, it reads eleven, and even MERS, it reads thirty-four. Huh? So forty percent. So it yeah. is it is more dangerous for SARS and MERS actually than the COVID nineteen. While for the normal influenza, it's only point one or point two because you rarely heard that. Someone died because of the flu, right? <laughs> yeah. Very, very, one, very less, very less yeah. amount. One point, a point, one point uh, five only, and then. Yeah, but not, but not zero. So yeah, it's still zero. chance. So <laughs> there is a still chance someone <laughs> yeah. to die because of the influenza. Yeah. 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 Also, he mentioned that the uh, incubation day, uh, incubation time for the COVID is ten days, yeah. Yeah, 10 to the, the safety limit is 14 days or two weeks. 14 days, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, he also mentioned that the elder more than 60 years old and those who have uh, other diseases like a diabetes or cardiovascular are prone to yeah. the COVID-19 virus. It's very prone to that virus, yeah. Okay, uh, so that's a brief uh, summary of what uh, Dr. Johan said, then I now open the opportunity for you guys to ask questions. Please type your questions on the chat uh, part or chat section. Please feel free to ask any questions. The first question comes from hundreds from the uh, Lyceum University Batangas in Philippines. Okay. Is there such a plant species or fruits that are being studied right now that possess an antiviral component that could help treating COVID-19? <laughs> yeah, it's very good question, right? Antiviral component, yeah. I can say that, yeah, I can say that all researchers mostly in the plant biotechnologies or uh, plant pharmacies, yeah, mostly working in the herbal medicines already working or undergoing this kind of projects. So until now, mostly, mostly the plants in Indonesia has the activity as the immunomodulator, means that the active compound from these plants has the effect to boost or to uh, strengthen our immune system, but not antiviral because Working with the, with the working with the virus means we must uh, do the purification. It means the further work, not only the extraction of the active compound. We must do very yeah very delicate work and very uh, long process to make the compound from the plants is very pure. Therefore, we can use that as the antiviral. And until now, maybe I can say it's very slight or very few amount of the experiment working with the antiviral, mostly working with the uh, immunomodulator, the immune strengthener. Uh, yeah, that's why, that, that's why that I can say today, right now. But I think for the antiviral for the other, the other viral infection is already well known. Yeah, such as like the pro, the product like the ginseng or the uh, we call in in Indonesia or maybe in India ginger. It has some slight activity of antiviral, but maybe it's not as strong as the yeah the synthetic or the chemist uh, the chemistry drugs such as favipiravir, the one that I mentioned before, because that one already pure or the single compound that can uh, targeted uh, the, the 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 protein of the virus very specific. So it can block the mechanism of the uh, virus life cycles that it can work as antiviral. Mostly in the, if you use the herbal medicine, usually use the extraction method. If you use the extraction method, it means they still has the uh, more than one compound or we call, it, we call it mixed compound. So the effect will not very uh, strong. So the, the, the experiment with this antiviral is, I, I believe in some country already uh, 
done right now, but still not in published, uh, not published yet, or not uh, informed well yet to the media. Thank you for the question. Okay, another question from Debasis Kundu from American International University, Bangladesh. Uh, he or she said, in Bangladesh, we have been seeing the number of COVID-19 patients are decreasing, even though people there are not maintaining social distance and aware of sanitizing. How come it could be? What could be the reason why it is decreasing, even though uh, the social distance is not maintained there? <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's such an interesting fact from the Bangladesh. Yeah, thank you for your insight. But uh, probably in here, I, I cannot say many different answers because I don't know how the Bangladesh government or hospital has the regulation in there. Because I believe I believe the the government in Bangladesh already has the a good protocol to 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 the isolation or self quarantine work well with the patient that already exposed with the COVID-19. Therefore, the infection cannot uh, or will not spread any further. I believe that this, this is the first hypothesis that I had. So the government or the hospital in there already have the strict regulation, all the symptomatic or the exposed COVID-19 patient already has, or must must have the isolated, must be, must, must got isolated and self-quarantine for at least 14 days. Or the other, the other uh, hypothesis that I had, probably all the Bangladesh people already has the immune modulate, modulatory uh, food. Yeah, some 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 from the spice or other foods that in Bangladesh they regularly take. They already has the immune modulatory component, so the immune system already prevent uh, the other uh, person to to get infected, or it can prevent the, the spreading of this COVID nineteen. Probably this can to to, to, to oh, answer that to the to 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 the, the, the basis kundu from Bangladesh. Thank you for your questions. Okay, next one, another question from Sandrax. Can we take the repurposed drugs of those who have not been infected of COVID nineteen as the pre pre exposure pro pilax? Pro pilax. So, okay, Sandrax. Thank you for your answer, but. I, I encourage you to not take those kind of action because as you know that drugs is made for the sick people, not for the healthy people <laughs> that prefer to see. So it's better not to take those kind of pre explosive prophylaxis action by, by like uh, consume like the papipiravir before you get sick. No, it's not the best action. The, 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 the best way to, to prevent the spread, to, to, to boost your immune system by keep healthy, uh, keep doing your work by doing the so, uh, physical distancing, something like that. Not not use the drugs because you're not sick people. You're healthy people. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for your. That's difference with supplement. Yeah, supplement yeah. is taken. Yeah. Before yeah. you sick as a prevention. Exactly, Mister Rati. Because that supplement. For those who are. Say exactly that that kind of drugs, not the supplement. So you cannot use uh, the drug as your supplement. Okay. Thank you for okay. your questions. Uh, question from Sharon Ak. Actor, what do you think of the current approach of the virus? They are not going to a full lockdown, but rather try to spread in spread it controllably in order to work towards health immunity. Okay, yeah, thank you for your question, Serin Actor. Yeah, I heard about this uh, term, yeah, herd immunity. It means that if all of the people, uh, most of the like the group of people already has the strong immune. Uh, therefore, it can prevent the spread of the, the disease or the or this or sars cov virus two infection. I believe that what also work if you already maintain your health and maintain your uh, healthy protocol well. So I, I believe this herd immunity can be work well. But uh, ironically, most of the people is not uh, pay attention of the details of this healthy health protocol in the country or in the city. Therefore, we must make pay attention with ourselves first, like how we like maintain the distance or use the mask properly, use the hand or the tissue when we coughing or sneezing, something like that. Because uh, yeah, we cannot easily change the, 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 the habits of other people, but we can, it's, it's more easy to change our habit first, make it become the new normal. So I believe we can uh, like live together with the SARS-CoV-2 like we live with the flu virus. We already work with this common flu every year. 
yeah. So we already got the flu, and then the next year we already got flu again, and we got uh, healthy again, something like that. The, our immune system becomes stronger. So yeah, this is will work with this heart immunity. Thank you for okay, your that's what questions. exactly said by Dr. Ika that we should start from <laughs> ourselves first. <laughs> yeah. In order to contribute to our community. Exactly, exactly. Then question from Randy. Thank you for the compliment. Um, in terms of health research, what can we learn from Korea and Indonesia relevant to the COVID-19 treatment or prevention? Okay, thank you. A question from Randy. Uh, where do you come from, Randy? Philippines. Oh, Philippines, yeah. Philippines. Okay. okay, greetings for Philippines also. The one that we can learn together from the Indonesian and Korea, we already uh, have uh, like uh, empirical study of many herbal medicines or herbal plants that work well with our immune system as immunomodulatory. So we can use or consume that one in the regular basis as a supplement. We can make it as the tea or we can uh, process it with uh, other foods like uh, become like spice, something like that. So the, our immune system become more stronger and it can prevent us to get infected. Uh, in, uh, in the Korea, I believe they have many herbal plants such as the ginseng. They use ginseng as the daily food also, daily supplement also. They will not use the ginseng as drugs because yeah, they, they just use the, uh, the ginseng as the soup material. They use the ginseng as the candy. They use the ginseng as the other, like the tea or other things like the regularly uh, daily intake, like the food or beverage. Therefore, uh, I think if you're in the Philippines has the herbal plant or herbal medicine that already has empirical study, like 100 years ago, they already well known to, to, to boost your immune system, you can use uh, that plan also. Thank you for your question, Randy. Thank you. Next one from Sharon. Another question. Can humans be infected with a novel coronavirus from animal source? Yeah, that's happened in all of those three kind of, uh, uh, I, call, uh, I call it epidemic to pandemic virus, right? Like the SARS, MERS, and the COVID-19. Because there are some mutation that randomly happen. It may be firstly originated from the animal infection, animal virus then it got chance to contact with the human. Suppose if you, you has the, the, the bird of the chickens in your farm and then you got interact with very oftenly, so that the virus, you got chance to that spill over the virus from the animal, got jump to the human. And if, if that virus can recognize the, the, the receptor in your living cell, in your cells, then it can be infected. But how? this virus can recognize uh, our receptor. It means they produce the protein receptor in the capsid, in the crown, then, and it happened randomly. Uh, it's very uh, like, we cannot, we cannot uh, predict when it happened, but when, when it, like the, in fact, it's already happened, that means it's already happened. Like the mutation already happened, but we don't know clearly when it, when, when and from what animal it's originated. Yeah, it's, it's, it's predicted from the armadillo or the bats right now for the COVID-19. From the SARS, they originated from the seabed cats. And for Mars, uh, it originated from the camel. Thank you for the question, Serin. Okay, what is another question from Rai Lore Jamile from Lyceum Batangas, Philippines? What is the latest update of the vaccine? Are we getting closer? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I believe I believe all the all the researchers around the world have the yeah very tight race to become the first uh, vaccine pioneer, yeah, the, the first vaccine take discovery for this COVID nineteen. So <laughs> as 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 uh, my confidence, uh, we already go to, to the right track. So yeah, I also I also give the hashtag for this presentation. We will survive. So doesn't uh, don't don't lose any hope. You know, we we believe that all all the research already has maybe around now until already reached phase two or phase three of the vaccine development means already one step closer again. The vaccine already can distribute all around the world and be commercially uh, got in the market available in the market. Yeah, thank you for your question, Railor. Okay. 
Andrew asks, how precise are the prediction made till now? Because he performed a hypothesis test on April. Uh, he's from Hindustan, India. Uh, uh, hypothesis test on April based on the data over the patients, fatality rate and etc. for India and few other countries. And the test results suggested that the number of new cases will reduce by July or August. But if you see now, the number of patients is still increasing and it's unpredictable. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Andrew. Uh, also has the same quote from the director of uh, World Health Organization I showed before that every single country has the chance to change the course of this pandemic uh, disease. To change the course means it can reduce or decline very quickly, or it can be stagnant, still rich, or it will become emerging or increase again, right? like the second curve, something like that. So it depends how the citizens there and the government work together to yeah, uh, give, the pay, give the extra attention to, uh, to, to stop or suppress the, the spreading of this disease. As I can say in Surabaya, uh, in here in Surabaya, we already passed the, you can say the lockdown phase. Uh, mostly of the Surabaya citizen feel now like no no COVID at all. So they already work in, in the mall, in the office, something like that. And some of them maybe uh, not wear not wearing any mask at all. So this kind of the behavior that can make very uh, like the second or third curve or third curve of the development of this. Uh, COVID disease. It's become unpredictable because we cannot maintain all the, the, the attention for this, the, the, all the citizens in some country or in some city. So, and as I said before, try to uh, discipline with your, your daily basis, with your uh, activity first. Then we hope that other people also become like that. Yeah. Thank you for your answer, Andrew. And thank you for okay. your question, Andrew. Thank you. Randy uh, informed that in Philippines have uh, medical plants and herbal medicines are used by ethno-linguistic groups, but there were not uh, studied empirical, uh, empirical studied yet on, on those plants. So he just gave uh, his comment. Then another question from Sandra. Can we use CRISPR Cas9 in gene editing to fight COVID 19? Okay, yeah, thank you. Uh, this is CRISPR Cas9, also, is very uh, newly breakthrough in the genetic engineering. And it mostly happened with all the organisms, like the plants, microorganisms. It's originated from the microorganisms, but recently it already worked well with the animal plan and con controversially also try to happen with the also be done in the human but in case of this means that we do the editing in the virus or in the human because if you do the the crispr cas9 in the human it become controversy because you you did the something that god can do the, the, the to edit your genome system that you cannot cannot uh, infected by the virus but it's still gambling because we don't know how the virus can be mutated and can infect again to the human. So I believe that CRISPR-Cas9 also become one uh, solution, but it's not uh, only the only one. Maybe we try the other, uh, the other tools first because it's very controversial uh, tools if we use this for the human. Thank you for your question, Sandrix. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Serin Akhtar, for your compliment. It was uh, very interesting and informative Session, Dr. Johan. Thank you, thank you. Then, uh, from Fardino Islam from Dafodil International University, Bangladesh. Also, thank you for your compliment. It was a very informative session and uh, we covered all the topics holistically. And perhaps this would be the last question from Terin. Who are the vulnerable and high-risk groups of people based on age and disease? Yeah, I would say based on age is uh, mostly in the data, in this data, health data that we receive is above 60 percent. Uh, sorry, 60, 60 years, old. years old. Yeah, but but in our like the, for our prevention, Upaya gave the instruction, uh, the one that 
above 50 years old, right, Mr. Rati, or 45 that cannot be go to the campus? Uh, yesterday, I read 45, but recently, Around 45. 50. Yeah, 50. yeah it become Dubai more... <laughs> Dubai is 50. Yeah. Yesterday, yeah. I read uh, in the newspaper, it was 45, though. Yeah, yeah, 45, but Ubaya is still 50 years old. Yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah, we, we give the extra attention for this uh, very uh, high higher risk group, the one that elderly, uh, more than 50, more than 60 years old, because those immune system already work very slowly. Yeah, the, 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 the physiological things that happen in this uh, group is very decline. Therefore, the immune system cannot work uh, as quick as, as prime as the like the 25 or 30 years old of people. And also for the disease, I believe it's the cardiovascular disease because the heart in the in the heart cells or heart tissue, they has the receptor, the S2 receptor, the exactly same with the S2 receptor in the uh, respiratory organ. So the one that have the pre, pre, uh, precondition for the cardiovascular disease or heart uh, and any kind of the heart failure, it has more higher uh, risk to cut the infection of this coronavirus. Okay. And those who, are, who have uh, another disease is also prone to the virus. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. I think any one or two more questions perhaps before I conclude the session. It was really informative. Oh, thank you. What thank are you. your views on the newly discovered <laughs> Irish Dunya virus from China? <laughs> yeah, I believe all of you maybe already pay attention with the media, uh, yeah, mass media call, yeah, or mass media information that updated very quickly. Yeah, I, I, I believe that this kind of virus always develop. Yeah, not only in China, maybe. Luckily, in other countries, some kind of the virus, some some similar with the virus also develop. Yeah, from from uh, the spillover transmission from the animal to the humans, uh, it's 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 a lot. Hap it's happened a lot. So it means that we must pay attention for all of the uh, healthy protocol. Yeah, it means that if you already pay attention with all of those, uh, you can you already one step closer to prevent any kind of the infection. That's what that I said right now because still, yeah, the, the, the research, the information can be changed daily, can be changed very quickly because the virus itself is also uh, always changed daily by uh, hourly or maybe time by time is always changed. Thank you for your question again, Andrew. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Andrew, for the last questions. Then we come to the conclusion of class two delivered by Dr. Johan. Once again, Dr. Johan, thank you for your time and your very informative session and presentation. I hope and believe that uh, your presentation would be useful for the participants, adding their knowledge because I saw some of them are from biologists. <laughs> yeah. and, I, I read also some of them uh, so want to be biotechnologists. It's very pleaseful, uh, pleasure for me to have the college from one of you later. <laughs> we can work okay. together later. Yeah. 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 If you have any questions about the Ubaya study program, please email me. And then, oh, yeah, we actually have three students from Daegu Health College. But oh. I think they okay, are from Korea then. On, uh, <laughs> yeah. Three okay. students from Korea. Okay. But I don't know whether they are joining us now. Yeah. Anyway. Dan Samida, Pak. <laughs> Thank Dan you also Samida. for the invitation. Thank you. Thank you also for joining us this session. I hope this session give uh, you many insights about the COVID-19. Uh, keep healthy, uh, keep smiling, and yeah, stay safe. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Pak. Thank, Thank you, so guys. So, uh, tomorrow we will have the class three, and the same, we will start by 10 o'clock. And then the second class would be at one, the same with exactly the same with today. So thank you and see you tomorrow, guys. Bye bye. Stay safe, stay healthy. Bye bye.